welcome back to another TechMinds video. So I recently purchased one of these, an AD8317 evaluation board, which is a logarithmic power meter covering from one megahertz up to 10 gigahertz with an RF input of between minus 55 dBm and zero dBm. The AD8317 provides a DC output of between 1.4 volts and 0.4 volts. We can then use this DC output to calculate the input power. Perfect for connecting to single board computers like the Raspberry Pi through an ADC or an Arduino analog pin. I remember coming across a project by Papa Alpha Zero RWE where he put together a power meter in a nice box with a two line LCD, a couple of buttons and a rotary control. They also created a nice program to load onto an Arduino, which is the brains behind this project. Now the website covers an explanation of how it all works along with a schematic and Arduino IDE code so you can load this onto an Arduino. The schematic shows using a 2x24 LCD but I only had a 16x2 I2C LCD knocking around so I was quite happily surprised to see a modified version of the project in the downloaded source code that supports an I2C display. Now the schematic also shows some extra components that are required, such as four resistors, a reference supply voltage, two switches, a rotary encoder, and then two 10N capacitors. The output from the AD8317 connects directly to A0 on the Arduino, or whichever analog pin you choose, as long as you set it in code. To get the best performance we can from the 10-bit ADC, we use an external voltage reference which is then fed into the AREF pin on the Arduino. Of course, you could potentially modify the code to use an ADS1115 ADC, which has 16-bit resolution. Now, once I downloaded the Arduino code, I opened it in the Arduino IDE. There was a couple of settings that I needed to change. The first was the I2C address set for the LCD, and the second was the voltage value for the reference voltage that I decided to use. I think mine worked out to be around 2.48 volts from the little device that I used. My first build was built using some VeraBoard, and yet it does look extremely messy, but it was just the initial prototype as I had a rather cunning plan up my sleeve for the final build. With the voltage reference board on the left, the Arduino in the middle, the LCD and buttons on the front panel, along with a load of spaghetti looking wires, it was time to fire it up to see if it works. For the first test, I just connected a USB cable to the Arduino. This allowed me to make any changes to the code as required. Now, once plugged in, the LCD lit up and showed some form of life. Yippee! The buttons appeared to work okay, but the rotary control was a little skippy, like it would skip past some of the menu items when turning. Now, the menu system has inbuilt features to allow selection of external attenuator values. These are from minus 10 dB up to minus 60 dB, which is great if you want to measure higher power. Now the reason for this is that the AD8317 has a maximum input of around zero dB. So we need attenuators to protect it if running more power. In fact, from what I've read, the linearity is only best up to minus five dBm. So using an external attenuator is best and really needed. Now this firmware, as we can call it, requires calibration for each band that you want to use. The author of the firmware has coded it so that each calibration readings are stored in EEPROM. Now I'm only interested in 13 centimeter power readings, which is 2.4 gigs. For this, we need to first supply an input of minus 10 dBm and then another at minus 40 dBm. The slope is then calculated and it's all safe to EEPROM. Once the calibration is saved, you can then start using the power meter as required. After performing the calibration using some strange method as I don't have a signal generator that I can rely on, I connected my HackRF to the AD8317 to see if it works. And yet, yeah, it works nicely. Now at this point, I could either fit everything into the case and call that job done, but I wasn't happy with how the rotary controller was working and the length and messiness of the cables inside. So I loaded up KiCad and started laying out the circuit as designed by PA0RWE. 
Now, KiCad is a tool which lets you design circuits with drag and drop components. And in the grand scheme of things, this circuit was extremely basic with only a few components and connections. Now, after laying out the circuit as shown here on the screen, I then switched to the PCB view. Now, this is where we can now connect each component using tracks. Of course, tracks cannot overlap each other. So in this particular board design, I also utilize the underneath. Here we can see all of the components labeled with their values, the Arduino location and connectors or wire holes towards the edges. Now, KiCad also allows you to view the board in 3D. And as this is the first time I've used KiCad, it felt kind of good and had a nice little wow factor while spinning the newly designed board in 3D. So the next step was to find out how I go about getting this board made and what would be the horrendous cost. Well, after some searching, I came across PCBWay, a company based in China that would make a minimum of five boards for a mere $5. That's $5 for five boards. Now, I only needed one, but $5 and you get five is not so bad. Now, luckily, PCBWay have a plugin which you can install in KiCad. So once you're done designing, you can click the button and all of the required files are uploaded automatically to PCBWay. Now the postage cost does vary depending on how quick you want your boards. Now I opted for the two day DHL, which costs $30, but there are some really cheap ones if you're not in a hurry for your boards. And once the order has been checked and accepted, you can log into your account at any time to check on the status. Each part of the process is detailed and you can watch a little video for each step that explains how it's being made. Now, I think that's pretty cool in itself. Of course, this is not your actual board, but at least you can see what's being done. A few days later, I received a package from DHL, opened it up and there we have it. The board, or should I say five boards that I designed on KiCad were finally in my hand. After an initial inspection of the quality, which I was dubious about considering they were so cheap, all looked okay. In fact, even the silk screening was done to perfection. With my fingers, arms and legs crossed, hoping that I did not make any mistakes on the circuit, I started to populate the PCB with components. Now, luckily there's only a few, so it didn't take too long to solder them in. With a fresh, newly programmed Arduino Nano, I started to install it into the box, and this is the final result. Now on the main board, you can see the Arduino Nano soldered into place alongside the little reference voltage regulator board. Now this is soldered in using some of the resistor legs. It holds in place just right a few millimeters above the main board. I think if I was going to do this project again, and I would design a board which has everything on just one board, including the AD8317. Now, PCBWay do offer component placement service too, so maybe in the future I might redesign this board properly. As you'll notice, I soldered the wires directly to the board as I didn't have any connectors and I forgot to order them, and I just wanted to get this board finished. Now, there are some other factors that I've thought about. And that's the length of the wires between the AD8317 output and the board, whether there will be any voltage drop and if so, how much, as this could potentially provide false readings as we're dealing with microvolts. Also, the coax length between the front panel SMA connector and the AD8317 board. Again, if this board was designed into the main board, then a connector could be placed on the board and flushed to the front panel. We have to remember that I'm not building laboratory specific equipment here. This is just home hobby stuff. You'll also notice another little butt converter next to the AD8317. This is so that I can feed 13.8 volts from my shack power supply. And then the butt converter will provide eight volts to the Arduino. The 8317 is powered by the five volt supply from the Arduino. So we don't need to worry about that. So it's time to turn it on and see if it works. And yep, it's working. The rotary control seems to be working a lot better than before too. Less skips as turning. Now without pressing the menu button, which is the green button at the bottom, the rotary control changes the band. This is because each supported band has its own calibration data. I probably won't calibrate the others until I need them, but calibrating the 13 centimeter band, 2.4 gigahertz, 
will be my priority. Not sure if I mentioned, but the rotary encoder is also a push button, wired to function as the select button. This just feels quite natural as you go through the menus. Now with the meter calibrated, or sorts, I then hooked up the hack RF with a 10 dB attenuator in line. Notice the screen now shows minus 10 on the bottom right to indicate that I've selected an external 10 dB attenuator. As you can see, the display is now showing the output value from the hack RF. Hopefully it's about right, and I think it is. I'm pretty sure the hack RF puts out around 10 milliwatts at 2.4 gigahertz. So there we go guys, that's my RF power project using an AD8317 logarithmic power detector. Anyway, if you guys have built something similar to this, or have any suggestions, or have some thoughts on this, then please let me know down in the comments below. I'll be interested to read them. Of course, nothing can be a fully calibrated expensive power meter. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you